There we go. Hello. Oop, I gotta Hello. fit into the image here. Hi. Hello. Hi everyone. Hello. Welcome Happy to the fourteenth episode of In Session. Yes. And we're very, very, very pleased to have with us today Crystal Zhao, who's joining us from very exotic location, Tossa del Mar <laughs> in Spain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> where you are currently yeah. in an artist residency, Crystal. Yeah. Lucky you. Um, very excited to be here and virtually be here and physically here. <laughs> very excited to have you here. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time um, out of the uh, beach time that would otherwise beach. probably be the, um, <laughs> the right way to spend the time right now with the Friday evening. Um, it's, a, it's a great break. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. Sounds really nice. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm going to stop. We, we talked a lot about Spain before we uh, went <laughs> live here. So um, so for you, for those of you who don't know, uh, Crystal is actually based in Los Angeles, where um, she's an experiential media designer and also a yoga movement instructor. And so my, I had a question for you. I've been thinking about this. So you've had a very interesting sort of uh, educational education path where in parallel, You've been mm -hmm. learning, you know, animation and media design and right next to that yoga training for teaching. So I'm very curious as to if and how these things inform each other in your work. And I yeah. guess. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, um, I originally had a painting and drawing background and then um, I got into animation thinking of I want to make like moving paintings and create uh, more moods and experiences through um, animation, but I was also really interested in world building and um, where I got, when I find out of um, doing experiential media design, it, it felt like it really merges all that and creating um, these these interactive spaces, immersive spaces. Um, and I'm always very fascinated by movement, also animation of physical movement and uh, movement in visuals. So um, it, I think as a way of self therapy and like understanding. Um, so it kind of merged well with also um, yoga and meditation in at least in my logic. <laughs> <laughs> kind of makes it makes sense actually. Mm. Yeah, and then even like with interactivity, I try to think of it as kind of a choreography of what type of movement the audience is doing that they're also in a way part of the piece. Very cool. And vice versa? Has yeah, has yeah. animation influenced your yoga practice? Yeah, well, um, I'm always like even on um, my social, I always like to play with using like yoga movements in connect and try to see different visuals I can create with um, with different movements and data um, and always kind of eventually think of doing some type of, um, of immersive yoga class with even like using your breasts or your yeah. um, or yeah, with so your EEG sensors to see what 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 this practice does. Um, nice. in a more internal um, aspect. You actually did um, you actually did a yoga class when you were at USC, right? You did a for the students. Yeah. Like you did a, so was that yeah. how, how um, did that yeah. how did that take shape? Yeah, because animators and um, also designers, you're often on the computer, your hands go small, like most of my friends who I know end up getting corporal tunnel from drawing. So um, I, I think not just, um, it's like great to know how to do splits, but more important is how you can live, um, use your body long term. So mobility and thinking of um, how you can be able to take care of yourself to also work longer. And and um, that's, I'm, I'm not very good at sitting for a very long time. So <laughs> I was, mm -hmm. uh, I actually had like my yoga mat here in the studio to also just oh, nice. uh, once in a while getting up and, and um, stretching. And, um, and so it was great 
I got my yoga training while I was in grad school in USC and I taught at the the gym there and also I did uh, classes for the animation students to wow. work on their wrists on their posture and um and I think it helps um on productivity at least sure. in my experience <laughs> very practical actually yeah mm, so, yeah so is did you sort of encounter touch designer at USC is that where it sort of began yeah um I in undergrad I um, did some processing and max MP and then um, it and then when I was in my first year in um, USC um, I my professor Michael Patterson he brought in people from VT Pro um, to show what they did and I was like wow this is what I want to do um, and he says they usually use touch designer and like kind of showed a little bit of touch designer. And then I, I started going on lynda.com, tried to learn on my own. And then afterwards they got Jarrett from derivative to do a, I believe three or four weekend workshop. And, um, that really was a game changer. And I was so grateful for, uh, doing that. And actually during that time I was, um, I was teaching, kids on the weekend but I, I, I made excuses why I couldn't be there <laughs> like oh, I'm going to a wedding or like I'm going because I really wanted to go to this workshop um but it was it was very much worth it and um end up in my thesis project I I used touch designer and that really helped me get more familiar with it and um the community of touch designers has just been so amazing Jared yeah. helped so much during my thesis too and and um, after I graduated, interned at VT Pro, so it kind of felt like it went full circle. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, it's 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 been it's been such a great experience of learning and being part of this community. Yeah, well, you were just uh, you've been very uh, well. You you've given a lot back. You're teaching and doing workshops, <laughs> and you're on the um, hacks uh, music hackspace meetup. Um, was it that two weekends ago? Two so, weekends ago, yeah. It was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's interesting. <laughs> so what are we looking at for this project? Um, this yeah. Oh, the root. plant project. Yeah, yeah, the plant one. Yeah, can you? This yeah. is a beautiful one. Can you tell us about it? Yeah. So um, it was kind of inspired when I was living in downtown LA. That um, it's kind of like a concrete jungle and I start getting more plants and I was hearing from a friend that plant sales went up by like 150% because more people are moving to cities and felt like um, this need to relate and communicate with them. So um, I did this project that had um, a few different plants and you can, there's a pot of soil where you can touch and as you touch the plant, it alters the animation that's projected on the um, on the vase, um, the pot, and also the audio. Um, and it was um, yes. it, it was in um, a gallery early last year, and then COVID happened, and then the plants lived there for a few months. Hmm. Yeah. Who took care of the plants? The gallery was well yeah. with that. Yeah, so yeah. I I had a, a dark light that I told them to turn on at night, and I was a bit worried that by the time, because I, I was not given a date when I could possibly pick them back up, and I was just uh, suspecting they would just be rusted and dried, but surprisingly, um, it it bloomed quite <gasps> Quite well, yeah. And then oh, they nice. told me yeah. it was even better before they officially closed. But um, they oh. they looked actually happier than when I brought it back and tried to take care of it myself. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, yeah. Really so, sometimes the human connection. Yeah, or yeah. Um, sometimes they actually like a little neglect. Mm -mm -mm. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's usually I think when I put too much effort, they they don't yeah. like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Zest, is that a project that sort of involves, uh, well, movement and, yeah. and uh, yeah. I think this was, uh, 
I did this when I was in USD. It was kind of my first um, projection project that I um, work with. So it was a really good kind of stepping stone into getting more into this world. Um, but uh, I performed in it. Um, at this time, I uh, was doing a lot of Tai Chi classes with my mom. And I was in this, um, my family was going through some like, health problems. And I was thinking of this theme of self healing and um, reflection and ego. So um, I, I did a green screen. One of them is my silhouette and the other one is a live performance of front and back projection. Um, and, um, and then it kind of encouraged me to a lot of projects to add a performance aspect that I feel gives a more, um, um, a human touch to, to, um, what seems to people that might seem very, um, virtual or techie, but can be more relatable. It's really pretty. And, and what, and the, is, what is the actual, like, what is the actual design in there? What is, what is the yeah, content? Yeah, it's actually um, details of my plants. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. Yeah, yeah, there were, there were photos, yeah, image of details of my plants and, uh, and displaced and, um, but yeah, there were um, plant images. Yeah, and I, I, I am very fascinated by collage. So I think I naturally tend to, um, combine like real photography images um, into my work, even though when I ever tell myself like I'm gonna make my own animation on the real, I end up just putting in photos that I took. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because you come from first of all a traditional animation background, right? So, yeah. So there's it kind of makes sense yeah. in that regard. And on your Vimeo, that was also you had um, the collaging aspect comes out in your Vimeo yeah. as well. You can really see it there. Yeah. 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 Good. We do have yeah. a, you also have a video where you actually show a little bit the uh, yeah. front, the front and back projection, back projection oh, nice. of yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, giving the idea how this was done. Mm -hmm. Really simple, really effective. Super mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. Great. Really nice. And we were talking earlier about the uh, 2021 uh, New Year's Eve uh, building project projection in downtown LA. And you said it was, uh, maybe we can take a look at that. It was virtually projected, but so it was still yeah. actually projected. It was, uh, it was not physically projected. It, oh. They had, yeah, it was um, with a, a 3D model, which was okay, kind of cool okay. that there were certain tricks on the side they can do that they couldn't do live but because of covid right. um it couldn't be a live show but um it was a fun project it was done with um you and co um so i i freelance with them for this grand uh, park new year's project very cool funny yeah so nothing of this this is basically was oh. streamed <laughs> Virtual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was all streamed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I was like, oh, look at those fireworks. Mm -hmm. Why is it so high outside? Unlike the real fireworks in Spain right now. Yeah. yeah. And wait, this was in LA, right? So LA doesn't yeah, this usually. Was in LA. And, LA wouldn't have fireworks, yeah. would they? Or? Really? There, there's sometimes some illegal fireworks that you illegal. hear popping around. Yeah. But, oh. but, um, but yeah, but also during this time in December was LA wasn't doing very hot with COVID. So yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or it was it was doing really hot with COVID. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so bringing us and this like, is there a favorite piece that I mean, what what uh, of of, what, of, yeah. of of the work you've done so far? I mean, what? Uh, I guess one that was the most kind of felt personal was Hush, uh, which was my um, grad school thesis and also the first kind of project that I did all in uh, touch designer and also made the content in touch designer. Um, and it was funny because like, yeah, when I was working on it, I was asking Aki and Jared, like, why is, why is my network so slow? And I showed Jared and this, this is, this is my first project and he was like 
she has such a headache seeing how messy my <laughs> network was. It was like a, like like a rat's tail, like it's all <laughs> tangled. It was like, like afterwards, I think it was pretty close to when I was supposed to have my show, and then he like showed me like how to do an organized network. It's like re redo everything, <laughs> like re reorganize everything, and it just it, it made everything so much better. But uh, but um. Yeah, I was like, okay, I'm gonna just connect here and here and here and here and, here and couldn't find anything and um, learned very quickly how organizing <laughs> makes a huge difference. Yeah, Jarrett saves the day. Well, yeah. <laughs> optimizes the day. I'm just, optimizes getting, the day. <laughs> just putting a video of it in here. Let's yeah, see, that's hush, that's because it. that's a dance yeah. piece, right? There. Mm -hmm. There it is. Yeah, so it was, um, he it act in two states. One had a dancer, Jake uh, Turnip, and um, and they had four shows in two weekends. And the I wanted him to have freedom to improvise in movements with a fixed track, and then his movements could affect the animation. There's also a connect in the center. And then um, when there wasn't a performance, um, people were encouraged to go inside the structure and interact themselves. And I wanted to build the structure so people can touch it and not feel so precious. Um, yeah. And this was um, a project that was the structure of it contact wise was based on the Tibet Book of Death of four chapters of infection. Um, um, denial, um, acceptance, and rebirth, and um, kind of on the subjects of the fragileness of the human experience, and um, and wanted to take people into this journey. Nice, very nice. So, how did you end up in Spain? Um, yeah, so I it's always been so beautiful. a long goal to do art residencies. Um, it was was kind of a dream to maybe have a year or two to just do art residency, travel a place for a few months, get stipend and place to live and uh, do my own personal work. And I applied to a lot. And unfortunately during COVID, a lot of them got canceled or everything was postponed. And this one, it was actually funny because I applied last year and they told me because all of 2020 residencies I'm moving to 2021, so my residence will be put in application for 2022. And then in April, I was working on this gig, and it was um, I remember it was on a live set, and it was dark because they were filming. And I got this email that says, "Hey, um, there's um, some people drop out because they can't travel. Would you want to come to Spain in June?" And <laughs> <laughs> I was okay. waiting for yeah, I was waiting for this <laughs> other gig if I maybe get it or not. And I was like, oh, what should I do? Should I wait? And I was like, I'll just first say yes and I'll figure it out later on. Um and and it oh. really worked out that they gave it's funded by Tosta Mars government. They have six residents. Um, they gave me a place to live. Um, a art space studio where I am right now and um, mm. we'll have a we can do our own personal project and a one month show in the museum in the castle and wow. um, and the 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 people has been so supportive um, I said I need a at least a 5,000 lumen projector they've been like the whole government's been trying to scout a projector for me if they fail they'll just buy one but um, but it's it's um, been amazing and it's a little bit hard to focus because they also take us to like kayaking trips and like snorkeling trips and um, meeting introducing us to people um, and it feels um, a bit like a marathon try to take everything in and make a project in a month but yeah, it's yeah. Um, it's been so fun and. The other residents are, are, it's been so inspiring to be in this environment because they're all in such different type of artists. I'm the only, uh, I'm, I'm known as a tech one that has all the gadgets. Because everyone, <laughs> they're like more painters and um, 
uh, sound designers. So um, it's it's been interesting also working with other artists and seeing their work process and yeah, how true. this environment uh, influenced them in different ways. Nice. Sorry, just to backtrack, I see a question <laughs> in the chat from Greg asking um, if you can say more about how the UI for four phases of the, of the Tibetan Book of the Dead was designed. Like what? Yeah. What did the uh, user do or experience? And then we'll go back to Spain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so um, I, I think I didn't share an image that um, that's on my website. Um, they have a breakdown of the four ch chapters. Um, and the first one where it is infection, I also the audio really helped. Uh, my, my dear friend Mochi Robinson was the composer and the fact that I had it that chapter be audio reactive and it was very uh, more chaotic um, sound and um, and then second it was in reality where it had the infection and layered onto um, more animation that was this place where the the movements can change the rotation of um, the projection and then meditation also was a more of a collage effect where it had different images of of nature and plants where your hand motions can move around and um, shift through the projections and then um, release was um, more on that and noise that that um, moves back to the beginning. So where where can we find this on your website? Then I can just show um, it here on the go crystaljow.com slash hush or work and then Oh okay work hush yeah. which word was yeah. that? And that one. Yeah, this yeah, one. that one. On yeah. the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. If you scroll down. <clears throat> and then scroll down. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there we go. There's uh, okay. like a little timeline of uh, it was four minutes and 30 seconds for the audio and then it kept looping. So these were kind of uh, snapshots of how the content looked like on the bottom um, during the the um, research phase of kind of planning of how I wanted the looks and also um, even like the costume, the colors to be. Um, which I also, on personal projects, I quite like having a little bit of collaborative feel when um, I had my composer, the dancer, and the costume designer, and like the dancer helped a lot on like deciding of what he thought would be uh, expressive for the audio, and the audio would affect the animation. And uh, it, it's I like having um, what other specialists kind of help on mm -hmm. creating what. Um, and make it them their own. Absolutely. I like your sketches. Very indigo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. the costume designer uh, did buy indigo and for mm. the costume. After. Wow, wow. <laughs> yeah. Cool. They didn't, they didn't grow it and then die from their no. own indigo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, There's she, a lot of that going on. Used Used my uh, the budget to buy indigo dye <laughs> so she can oh. also keep the oh, nice. kit for herself afterwards. <laughs> Very cool. And Greg yeah, is thinking. asking if this is a spandex screen or. Uh, Greg, Greg, <laughs> it Greg was, has a um, thing spandex screens. <laughs> yeah, it, it was scrim. It was, um, I don't know, in meters, but 50 feet long, and I sewed it together myself oh, and um, had uh, PVC pipes on the edge and suspended. Yeah. Uh -huh. There's a lot of, and, nice. and there was three different type of fabrics and one of them had glitter, which was like a disaster in my apartment for a while. <laughs> there was this glitter always everywhere, um, which um, I think I, now I would know not to work with glitter fabric. Okay. It wasn't, it wasn't yeah. worth it. <laughs> yes, yeah. stick yeah. to lasers. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Yeah, good. Okay, okay let's go back to Spain. Yeah. Unless, let's go back to Spain. 
go back to Spain. <laughs> I'm in Spain. Vamos. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, these are the six <laughs> residents. Um, the previous was the beach, which is a five to seven minute walk from uh, my apartment. So it's, it's and this is um, where I'm going to have my show. Um, so I claim the basement, um, which I I love the architecture of yeah, the bricks. Like and there's a lot of the type of brick stone um, architecture throughout the city, which um, I felt was very inspiring while I was walking. So the first week or first few days, I just start taking a lot of images, photos of uh, details of um, of the city and wasn't really sure what I was going to do with it yet. And then uh, felt like what were what I was interested in kind of puzzle piece it to um, my idea and project that I can talk further about. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What so exactly? We'd love to know what uh, what you are doing. Yeah. There. Yeah. So, well, when is, I is this a castle? For... Sorry, but is that a castle? Are are you are you in uh, that 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 domed room? Is that in that building? Yeah. So it's um it's inside in the center of it. But yeah, there's it's okay. it's like you see the tower. It's behind. That's where the museum is. Okay. Uh, yeah. So. Um, okay. So. Yeah. When I applied, it was middle of COVID, and it was really a time when I was thinking about um, how time itself is very strange, that um, I was home all the time, and it feels like um, I couldn't, that time is passing fast, but everything was still the same, and the only way I could really um, can tell that things were going forward is like my plants growing mm -hmm. and it was something that felt very personal but it's also something very collective that we're all experiencing in the world and um this kind of idea of space and time was something uh, i kept on in my mind so going through this town and seeing taking photos of all these um the roads and the buildings and feeling how this has been here, I believe, since like uh, the there was the the castle, the fortress was built in the 1100s. So then, how so many people have walked through here, and how it have changed, but um, the buildings are still existing, and the nature around are also moving, but also the same, and um, this this play on. Um, we have different moments where we we intersect, um, and um, this this theme. So um, I wanted to incorporate my own movements in the space and where the basement is, um, with also the layers of the town, and have people also interact with it. So, um, and it's kind of interesting even now thinking how. I haven't recorded myself with the connect. I'll use connect here to record myself um, doing improv in the space. But um, but by the time the show is up, they're interacting with my past, which will be their right. present. Yeah. And yeah, by the time I will be probably back in LA. So it's it's um, and this and I also want to record um, connect. Uh, uh, two recordings of the other residents, the residents, and I said like I want to use those and play around with it when I'm back in LA. So it's like this um, something there that's gonna be back at home, and I'll leave something behind there um, that people can can have a dialogue with. Nice, very nice. Yeah. Yeah, and I I chose this space in the basement because it feels like an intimate um, area where people can feel like they can pause and reflect. Mm -hmm. Cool. So here's your touch designer network. Would yeah, you like to take us uh, through it a little bit if you would like yeah. to? Yeah. Um, just first, uh, it's still pretty early because I, I, I haven't even been two weeks since I've been here. Um, but on the left, um, it's... Um, it houses all the textures if you go into that container layer one. So 
there on the left side there um, I have it's coming out of a folder of different textures I took on the city and the bottom are different uh, details so it is just um, pulling out a folder that shuffle um, going through the different images in a point to LFO. Um, I, yeah, and then I'm having them to crossfade. If you go up, cross between each other um, using a LFO to cross and displacing it um, with a noise. And I am planning to also have the people's um, movement from left to right to also uh, increase the amplitude of the noise. And um, so it could um, also have interaction with the audience of um, going forward and back. Um, mm -hmm. And if you... And I'm having, I'm planning to have people's hand movements to break through the different layers. So thinking of the building, the forward, for front layer and the nature as the back layer. So this is right now just a test if the spheres were the hands, I'll probably have them smaller, but um, they can see the, the leaves and the nature under it. Yeah, nice. And it's pretty. feedback, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't make this, but have this uh, Ruth Etra tool mm -hmm. and um, can play nice. with the particles. Yeah, and planning if as people are more far away, the particles will be more dispersed. And as people go closer, you can see the image closer. Um, in the network, I haven't added sound yet, but I have done recording of in the water and also um, with all the fireworks going on um, and added, um, altered it to have reverbs and uh, delays and having, I want also the, the movement to um, slow down the audio where it's, it's unrecognizable and as you get closer to be a little bit more clear. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then, Very nice. right, and then that's the masking layer here in the end before yeah, it goes yeah. out into the uh, yeah uh, to the screen. Yeah, yeah. I think there's um if you can also bring out the kind of the concept art um, of the piece example layers um, and the floor. Oh, where? Sorry. Um, image. Uh, I um, the image of the concept art with the example layers. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. Um, da -dum, da -dum. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. In the present. Yeah. There. This one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, thinking of having the projection on a back projection projection on a scrim. So um, and so it's all feather the edges and have the sensor on the top, um, the connect sensor on the top. Yeah. Right, to get the, yeah. So it's kind of, it's as it's shown here in the layer, it's kind of dissolving into the tunnel with the, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Wait, is, it a, is it a performance that lasts, I mean, an installation that lasts a certain amount of time or it, it just repeats? Uh, I think, um, here it just repeats, yeah. And it looks like maybe, it looks like that it's also uh, to a certain degree also on a randomized, um, mm -hmm. like I yeah. see you're sorting and, the images. Yeah, and I like how the way I'm having in a folder dot where I think since I do still have a two weeks here that over time I'm still collecting more images and can continue adding into the images in. Um, Keep adding them so, in, exactly, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's good. Um, I saw one thing, because you were asking a little bit about um, optimization techniques, perhaps. Mm -hmm. So we went, mm -hmm. we basically went looking because you asked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <But> otherwise, <laughs> uh -huh. 
that is already a really nice clean network. Mm -hmm. um, just yeah. because you said you're going to add more, I was wondering if you turn mm -hmm. the refresh on here, then it's probably mm -hmm. it's going to be um, um, automatically adding them to the mix. Mm -mm -mm. But um, so one thing I saw that made me curious was that this dot here is cooking. This uh, mm -hmm. sort dot where you randomize the images. Mm -hmm. And that goes into the images base component. And now it mm -hmm. unfortunately makes all the movie file in tops cook. And mm. in in when like summed up, it takes a bit of time. Mm. So and we yes. can totally we can totally solve that if you if you think about it this way that you will never change um, the data, but you will just mm -hmm. change the, the um, basically how you pull out the data. So how you get mm -hmm. the uh, images will randomize that number instead of randomizing the order. Because what I saw as mm -hmm. well was that when hitting the uh, one key on the keyboard, it's, mm -hmm. it randomizes everything, right? And mm -hmm. That can actually take quite a bit. Now it's stalled. Mm -mm -mm. If I hit yeah. one again, it's stalled. Um, mm -hmm. So, but anyway, we can we can solve that quite quickly. And there's a there's a nice little trick that I like to use for random numbers. One thing would be noise, mm -hmm. random noise. Mm -hmm. But random noise mm -hmm. doesn't guarantee you that every image is being shown once. It could be mm -mm. numbers that are repeating. So what I mm. do like to do in this case is take a pattern chop mm. and set it to ramp samples. And ramp samples mm. means that it creates a ramp where every sample has the value of its index. So mm. a ramp with 1000 samples has a value range from 0 to 999. Um, and now I just have to set the lengths to the number of files that you have. So I'm just going to get this here mm. from the folder. Uh, folder one dot num rows minus one and that errors. Oops. There. Okay. And so now I have the indices for my movies. And then mm -hmm. I can use a sort chop. And I think that's something that Eric added not too long ago. Mm. Maybe, I mean, time flies fast, so it might have been two years ago, <laughs> um, which randomizes my ramp. And now it looks mm. like random noise, but I'm guaranteed mm. that every number is actually um, unique. So it's definitely mm. just made from these numbers from the ramp in. And mm. I already have my counter here, so I can use this in a lookup as an... Uh, as the index into a lookup. Here is my value table. Now in the lookup, I have to specify the index range. My index range should be zero to 49 samples here, mm -hmm. which coincidentally again is the number of uh, files here. Mm -hmm. Or if I want to do it totally programmatical, I can also say me dot inputs one so i get the second input and then dot num samples minus one so i have my index range zero to 49 don't interpolate do not cycle and connect this here to the counter and now i can disable this sort everything stops cooking except for my lookup here. And when I want to change the order, I can just like, this is really lightweight. There's almost mm. nothing happens basically. So um, that would be a, a simple optimization to stop these images mm. from cooking. Um, nice. What else? And, did I... Um, I think you can mention as well uh, the cloning. Maybe oh, right. Too. Yeah, that's true. Mention it. Um, what is useful is um, when often, but I mean, that's something um, comes with um, working longer on the project, I guess, when you're cleaning up. What we'd like to do or like to encourage is that we start 
with custom parameters pretty much right away. So if I set a folder parameter on this, for example, where I point to uh, the building folder. Up, whoop, control Z. I'm just um, doing this a little bit quick and maybe also create a custom parent shortcut, like not use the default mm -hmm. one that's project because then there will be so many. So I just call this mm -hmm. um, bad naming. I'm sorry about this, but really <laughs> good to come up with good names on a... And then I could basically say here, Hi. parent dot parent dot par dot folder dot eval and uh, make this as an expression. Let's see, damn it, there. Whoops. Mm. Parent dot. Uh, you want no. to parenthesis, but I think you wanted to say parent dot folder dot par. Dot par dot yeah. folder. <laughs> Uh, okay, don't follow my naming here, please. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> terrible. Anyway. Uh, I'm, surpri I'm surprised we don't have a comment from Greg in the chat already. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's commenting, but not about that. <laughs> nope. I nope, think, I think, I think there's it. a lag somewhere. Yeah, okay, there's a lag. The comment <laughs> will come. <laughs> anyway, when you have done this, if you have the folder outside and the custom parameter, um, now it becomes really easy to clone this um, mm -hmm. this component because all the things that are different in here for each component mm -hmm. is just the folder. The rest is the same. So you could, um, making any changes then in image stacking will bring all the changes into the other components that are cloned as well. Um, let's try that. Details too. Let's just do that here. Common clone master. Um, what is it uh, complaining about? Yeah, the parent, the parent mm. shortcut is missing. Folder. Not details uh, too. Uh, try to pulse, refresh. Let me just see if I can see that that is correct. Yeah, I see. just have to pulse. Oh, the refresh is off, right. Yeah, so let's keep the refresh on here. Um, okay, so that's good. Then, um, one more thing that I saw here, which I thought might be helpful for, I just saw it and I thought it's good to uh, mention. You're driving the cross, the cross blending mm -hmm. here. And at the same time, mm -hmm. you're changing images. So now, mm -hmm. or you're changing the source. So now that somehow has to happen in tandem, like in syn yeah, synchronized. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I thought one of the things that I could point to was that the LFO job actually has this third mm. input, which is source wave, mm. and that could be used. Now, again, there's 3000 different ways of doing this, and I just thought, OK, mm -hmm. I'm going to point this out. So I have my cross blend here, which is a sine wave. Mm. And um, as a second wave, let's call this here cross. Mm. As a second wave, I could just um, append something that switches the image, switch image, and I make this one here a uh, square wave. Mm. And mm. then I change the face to, I think it's 0 0.25, which now means that when the cross my, my my cross fade wave here, when it's at mm. the one extreme, then I have a change in the switch image. And when it's at the mm. other extreme, at the lower extreme, I again have a change oh. in the number here. So if I feed this into the LFO, um, and now I got to add two channels here, I'll call it cross and switch. And now change the cross to 
across. Now what I can do inside my image stacking, ah, I, I kind of um, screwed myself with the, with the cloning, but that's okay. Um, I can select that shop from above. What is it called? Now one, just gonna do this. Oh, my cat is invading my space. <laughs> now one. And I just need the switch channel here. So let's get switch. One, 0 0.5. Oh, sorry. I should, my, my square wave here, I copied it. Oh wait, that's weird. What? Ah, because it's going through the math here. Sorry, you had a math here where you changed the value range, right? I'm just going to disable that. Mm. Okay, so switch one, zero. And now I can put this here into the count where you change the images. And I can say this count here should change. Um, uh, that should be on to off. This should increase, okay? And I gonna make this a clone immune because on this side here, I need to make it not on to off, but off to on increase count. Okay, and if I'm not mistaken, yeah. So now you see it. Crossfades and once it's mm. at one end, then it switches the image at the other end. It uh, switches the other one. So that's a simple, mm. simple solve here. Um, any questions? Yeah, now it doesn't jump so much. Right, now yeah, it doesn't that, jump. That's something I've been trying to find, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, uh, next. The other question you had was about um, fluids, 2D fluids. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I thought maybe just to, um, I, saw, I saw this place here and these mm -hmm. places are almost already, like they are very fluid-like fluid mm -hmm. in a way. So I just yeah. wanted to point to a simple trick that uh, is always very enjoyable, um, which is, as usual, involves a feedback. Um, so if I apply mm. a feedback loop onto a displace, then I can now start doing um, constant displacements with the, uh, well, it's basically a displace and a feedback. Um, but mm. uh, what's always useful is if you don't make it a closed feedback loop, but bring in mm. the original image still a little bit. <clears throat> so mm. you want basically, you mm. want mostly mm. the feedback, but a tiny bit of the new image that's coming in. So you can see that mm. when it crossfades, the colors here change. And now mm. I need to have a very small amplitude, something like this and make this uh, colored, uh, nice. kind of a colored thing. And it starts moving um, a little bit. Now, yes. the last step just, for this, to... the last step for all of this would be a 32-bit float. Um, That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, <laughs> just, um, and that makes it, that makes it, you lose, what you're losing is it's not light anymore. Now it's getting a little bit expensive, um, mm. but uh, you get you get a certain fluidity in there, and um, yeah. you have good control with the noise. Now for mm. added effect, if you want, um, I mean, yeah, maybe I'll put this in the background here. Um, what's also always nice is if you. Um, use the second input of the noise, <clears throat> which is a noise coordinate map. So now you're picking mm. noise via a UVW input. So if the noise is a cube, 
then your three color channels that are going into the second input are kind of like X, Y, Z points in this cube where it picks the noise from. What that means is when you give it a color image is that the noise of similar colors will be similar. And mm. the effect yeah. that you get, I'm not sure yeah. how well you can see that there, but it becomes yeah. a very... Wow. Um, <laughs> it, it looks like the sea in Spain, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looks like my kayak trip. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, there's, I mean, there's tons to play around with feedback loops in general. I just thought because you already had a displays here, I should point mm. this one out. Uh, most important always is with feedback loops, as soon as you go from 8-bit to 32-bit, you have a whole new world of possibilities. It just changes the whole concept of a feedback loop. Not only is it that, um, for example, in this feedback here, I'm not sure how easy it is to see, but you have this gray background yeah, yeah. This, and mm -hmm. usually that's a rounding error for feedback. So the rounding mm -hmm. error meaning it um, multiplies the last value by 0, 0.0 something. And then there is this 8-bit yeah. limitation where it always rounds up to 0. 0.01 or something mm -hmm. like that. And that's stuck as soon as you change this into um, 32 or 16. Uh, in this case, 16-bit float usually is enough already. Ah. It disappears. Mm -hmm. You just want to make sure that whenever possible, you change afterwards, you change it back into 8-bit. Otherwise, your processing mm -hmm. time goes up quite extreme. Um, dum -dum -da -da. Oh, right. The last thing on my list here is to basically look at proper fluids um, and just mm -hmm. give a quick idea how you perhaps could use um, something that's already out there to uh, um, to uh, uh, have fluids in interactive fluids in your installation. And for that, um, I wanted to Mark. yeah. We have a question from Greg asking why float versus int. Why float versus int? So with for feedback. Um, uh, I'm I'm guessing, yeah. So okay, if you let's take uh, const well hmm. output uh, how to best do this. Okay, let's take a chop top two and just have a look at it quickly. And look at this level here. Now, what do I, what did I set to 32 bit? Did I set the whole thing or just one? Ah, I was very lazy. I set all of them to 16 bit. Okay, let's set them to 8 bit here. And um, reset. So, Hmm. What's happening is that we see this constant remainder of uh, that gray stuff there. Hmm. I'm just going to pause here. So there is this, uh, and the gray stuff is a function of the feedback, what comes back, multiplied mm -hmm. by 0 0.977. So for 8-bit, mm -hmm. I have... 256 possible color values between 0 and 1, basically, um, or between 0 and 255. Now, if I take, for example, if the value that comes in is 2, or, well, no, if the value that comes in is my 1 value, like the lowest value, theoretically, that gets multiplied with 0 0.977, because I only have these integers available, it's always going to be one. It's never going to be zero. But mm -hmm. if I switch this into a 16-bit or a 32-bit float system, I can lower this with 16-bit, I can lower this quite down. And with 32-bit, I can get rid of it completely. Um, not sure if that was a good explanation. Anybody follow? I, I think I did. 
let's see. It's um, yeah. <laughs> I do. There's a. There's also a YouTube um, a workshop that we did in Japan. A feedback workshop. I, I'll find the link later. Where um, there's a whole explanation to this th thing. It takes a little bit to work through it all. And since I wanted to show okay. you the other fluids, though. Um, so there, there is a slight twist from Greg's question: Was why 16 bit versus eight? Uh, why not int 16 when you selected float 16? I think I think that was the question. Oh, I don't know. I'll pass that question back to Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Would it be it probably cheaper with 16 bit? I never thought about that to be honest. Where is where where do we even have 016 bit fixed here? Can you go can you go negative? With fixed, um, we we don't see your touch designer anymore. We see uh, uh, YouTube. Oh, whoops! Sorry. Uh, one sec. There. Um, I don't know if what's I I really don't know. I have no clue. Sixteen bit oh. fixed. Can you go? Can you go negative with sixteen bit fixed? Okay, in sixteen is better. Just no explanation, back. no explanation why, but it's better. Okay, so take in 16. <laughs> um, right, so the next thing that I meant to show you was, um, this goes back to a talk that Noah Norman, who we had two months ago on in session, right? Uh, Noah Norman gave this talk in Berlin on GLSL fluids for great shader success. And um, he shared the uh, he shared the whole file on GitHub, and um, there is the link. You can download the whole thing. Uh, I'm just mm. gonna start this one up. One second, I forgot to start that. This is called Touch Fluids. And it's basically an interactive uh, fluid simulation that needs a little bit of um, adjusting to um, fit for your needs for what you described. So what we can see here is basically uh, we have, um, let it, let's put it here. So we have this we have this fluid system that looks very fluidy, and if I move with my mouse mm -hmm. through the whole thing, I can add um, a color to it or add um, this uh, disruption well, to mm -hmm. it. Um, and so this is a good idea to take. This is the perfect example mm -hmm. actually to use. So I'm just going to copy this. Mm. Move this to the side and stop it from playing and um, go outside here, paste it here. And initially I get a lot of errors. Um, <laughs> and if I go inside, I see that all these dots are erroring. Now, this is something you got to be a little bit careful when copying from other people, because some people like um, saving their uh, dots outside on disk. Mm everything is on disk mm. when it when you copy such a component into another network then all of them will error because they say oh we cannot find these files so uh but the error can be taken away by just turning off load on start and write on save or you copy mm. all the files over that's possible as well um mm. i'm lazy in this way so i just gonna do this <laughs> dip, dip. Um, Michelle likes, I think, saving things outside. It's easier than mm -hmm. to work with in uh, projects. It can be easier mm -hmm. to work with in projects when you ex um, externalize all of these files. There's a lot that's mm -hmm. absolutely right for this. Anyway, um, so, and this little network here has three, as in the description, it has three points that we can kind of 
get to it or start using your um, start using your input as the input to this whole network. First of all, there seems to be a banana that is disappearing very quickly. Mm -hmm. that, that's a banana. That's a banana. So yeah. instead of the banana, we basically want. Um, oh, we a, we keep the banana. Come on. We keep the banana. <laughs> we will add the banana to the whole project. You obviously, need to get rid of the banana. So I'm gonna get this. Um, I'll just get layer one. Uh, layer one out, you had named it. So I'm going to get this, yeah. put this here as an input. And uh, now this is the start and then it totally flows mm. away. Like I never get back unless I hit this start button. Awesome. But similar as before, if we just put a cross in here and just keep feeding mm. a new image, And it just has to be a tiny bit, basically. Or, I mean, depends on how much you want to see it. That's, I should say it this mm. way. How much of the new image should come through. You can get, um, you can get a fluid simulation with your... Mm that's interactive with your mouse that's now actually interacting with the image. Um, similar, you might not want to have these constant forces here. So we can uh, take that out and take the static force out as well, because all we might want is just the, um, mm. the mouse cursor. And Okay, that's great. Now, last but not least, also we don't want it to be pink. I'm just gonna make the decision. <laughs> so it's a transparent interaction. <laughs> and perhaps you don't want this to be a mouse because you actually have um, like block tracking or connect tracking or something. So, we just have to figure out where this comes from or where this goes to. And I think this was mm -hmm. the, it's the... We have a question from Alpha Moonbase asking why level top and not mass top? Uh, habit. Old habits die hard. Yes, <laughs> let's use a mass top here. Thank you. Mass, nice. Ah, what is that? I keep having this problem that I cannot get to the parameters. There we go. Multiply zero. I hope that's too, that's better. Let's mix it. We'll have one math, one level, just for good old times. <laughs> so we are gonna add here <clears throat> an input for the uh, interaction. Um, Customize, customize, customize. <clears throat> Sorry. And I'm going to put this here on the stuff. Is it stuff or force? No, it's going to be on the force page. And we're going to call this uh, force position. Let's make this a little bit shorter. Force position x, y. And we also need a mouse click. So we're going to call this force active. And we'll make this a momentary toggle, not toggle, momentary button here. And this one has also a parent shortcut called project. We'll just call this fluids. Ooh, am I breaking things? No. Okay. And now I can <laughs> go into here into the uh, shader and basically say parent.fluids.par.forcepassx and force point plus y and the U mouse button is going to be my force active. Okay. 
And just to um, quickly hook that up again, because there's one last step that I wanted to show, I'm going to select an insight. Inside U, inside V, and uh, select now and export these onto the correct parameters here of my new parameters that I created. Force pass dumb and active. Okay, and now if I Oh, and I need to reference my fluids into here. So now that works again with my mouse. Mm -hmm. Now, the one thing that I can see is that my, um, it might be hard to see for you right now, but the velocity of the mm -hmm. force is going in always a static direction. It doesn't matter where mm -hmm. I move, it's always static. Like it's always the mm -hmm. same direction. And mm -hmm. we can fix that basically with uh, um, take a select here, get the inside U and inside V, and attach a slope, slope chop, and um, we'll add a merge here. Okay, we'll rename this, rename to, uh, ooh, L U L V. sure, merge it in, and now we'll export the value to the XY bias, now the second one here, and now if we look closely, we can actually drag the, the velocity now has the direction of where we're dragging it mm. to. So if somebody moves their hand left to right, mm. the, this is actually going to move left to right, like you're accelerating the whole system directionally. Um, 5 p.m. Do you have enough time, uh, to, um, Michelle? For your thing. Do I have it? Do I have enough time? Uh, yeah. We have one more hour. I think so. If as it you depends wanted, also on you, you wanted uh, the, the, were there more things you wanted to show on your end? I think I'm through. That's actually. Oh, okay, I should. So... I should. I should explain why I chose inside U, inside V here instead of um, just U V. If you use U V for this, then. When you use a slope, there will be a, a big jump between the U, um, the U's and the V's, depending on where you click and where you stop clicking. And then the slope mm -hmm. would react. It would the initial slope would be huge. So with an inside U, inside V, um, it picks up always the inside U, inside mm -hmm. V, and then you have to. Um, it already has the proper values, basically, or smooth values before applying it to mm. the effect. Anyway, that was my consideration here. Um, control S, that's my, that's my thing. Any questions? Mm -hmm. We have questions in the chat. Uh, I think they're just talking to each other. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess that's a good thing. Um, ama amazing stuff, though, uh, Marcus. Yeah. Michelle, do you want that file or? Yes, please send me the file, and we're gonna continue having okay. having fun. Yeah. Give me one second here, Explorer. Maybe a maybe a quick mention here while while you guys are switching up that uh, um, the HQ Championship is having a second. Well, the HQ is having a, a second championship. If you guys remember um, the first esports event, Ooh. Touchline esports event last year, well, it's going to ride again. And maybe Albers can put some put a link in the um, in the chat here. Nice. How to uh, how to sign up? Get in, get in quick. Get in quick. Exactly. That's all I have to say. Get in quick. Hey, Albers. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, okay, uh, Michelle, shall we get you online here? Yes. Michelle, say something. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> oh, you don't like the focus. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not. I'm not doing anything here. <laughs> Hello everyone. <laughs> well, you're back. Hi. <laughs> Albert say hi. It says hi, Crystal, on the chat. <laughs> Yay. All right. Um, okay. Well, it's it's uh, it's me here. Um, so you mentioned, um, Crystal, that uh, you were interested uh, in some block tracking. Am I right? Yes. And um, you also mentioned that you will use uh, some Kinect. So we figured uh, that we will do some blob tracking and uh, Kinect stuff. And um, so one, um, one point uh, that we might want to ask first is that, uh, what, how did you imagine to use your Kinect in your setup um, for your tracking, uh, would you use a depth map or would you use just a uh, chop data and have skeleton tracking of users? Um, for, for the user, I was thinking of using chop data. Um, yeah, connect chop data. Okay. And so the, with, the, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, sorry, continue. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, and yeah, top data, and then with the hands using um, the UV space of Connect. Okay, so the blob tracking doesn't really have anything to do with with, or you will use the Kinect in in, in that project, right? It's more some general yeah. question. Yeah, I was a more general question, and also before I was. Uh, debating of using a um, a webcam or a connect, but afterwards I think I'll go with connect. I just didn't really want to leave my connect over. <laughs> but I'll, I'll, um, but um, I think that's the way to go. But I also very uh, want to know more about blog tracking too. Okay, perfect. So. Um, blob tracking. Let's get started. And uh, where should I go? Let's just do a little uh, blob tracking example here. Yay. Oh, actually, yeah, just here. And so we, we'll just set up a very basic example um, tracking shapes. Um, and uh, we'll use uh, just just two circle to start with, um, moving around, and I'll make them a bit smaller. That might be a bit too small. And that will be uh, two shapes. That's a very simple first example that we will follow. And after that, I will show another example, but using Kinect data, and we'll have also some point cloud stuff. Uh, just it might be interesting for for everyone in the chat as well. Um, so here, what I want to do, I will use um, just some simple math to have my circles moving around in circles as well. All right, first one moving, and. Um, here on the on the tops, maybe you noticed we have a new page on I think most, if not all, of the tops where you can compose it all your tops right away. Yeah. It's really handy. Oh, um, nice. So yeah, you see we have already or two circles here without using a composite top or anything else. So we'll just do that and we will add uh, yeah, OK, let's just track them like that. It's fine. Um, so one thing uh, with blob tracking, so you'll see if we want to track those two circles moving around, right, which eventually could be uh, just two users, you know, walking 
in some open space. Um, so if we add um, a blob track right after that, you will see that my performance are going to get quite a hit. And see, I dropped to 25 frames a second just by doing that. OK, so one thing to know is to really, um, when you do blob tracking, you do it at a small resolution. And uh, so just here, I'll do fit. And yes, here we're going to have the debate in the chat. Should you use a fit or should you right. use uh, a resolution? Resolution <laughs> task. <laughs> um, <laughs> so here I now have uh, my blob tracking going on, you see, on um, a really a small uh, resolution. And you can see that my frame rate is back up to 60 frames mm -hmm. per second. And yeah, in, in that specific case, because we have, we have a clear background, you know, with uh, an alpha channel uh, where you can really see those two shapes moving, uh, the blob tracking is quite easy uh, because you have, um, with, with the default values of the blob tracking top, you can already track those two circles, okay? Um, there is um, quite a few um, interesting um, parameters, however, here. Uh, and one of them is for the blob size, uh, I find. When you want to uh, pick uh, a specific shape, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a lot of shape, you, you know, uh, let's say you have a user walking around uh, with a red uh ball uh soccer ball in the hand and you want to track that specific item you know what should be the average size of that item versus um a body or anything else uh so that could be interesting let's say to change here the size of that little guy and maybe it's way too small but we'll try and so you see it's not being tracked anymore Actually, I'll change that so that we can see better. So the the small uh, the small uh, circle moving is not being tracked anymore, um, but the big one the bigger one is. So we'll just tweak a bit here, and hopefully we're gonna be able to pick it up at some point. Yes, here we have it. OK, so you can see um, here ID number 10. And even when the two circles are overlapping, uh, it's another really interesting thing is that you can uh, sometimes keep your um, keep your IDs, which can be very uh, useful uh, down the network, right? So I know, for example, if a user is in your Kinect, field of view is getting in, going out, getting back in. There is, I think, 98% uh, changes that this ID will just drop when it gets back in. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I didn't use a Kinect in a, in a while. So um, to keep this ID, um, you can uh, just use here the settings, revive blobs. And um, and also tweak those parameters with revive revive time and uh, revive area difference and all that. Uh, you can also um, use when you have multiple blobs uh, together. So like this, if I tweak. Uh, oops, that was not the one I wanted to change. Here, uh, where you have multiple blobs being tracked, uh, you could tweak with deleting by blobs so that um, your blobs are being merged basically when they are really close to each other. Any questions so far from the chat or from you, Crystal? Depends on it. yeah. Okay, perfect. So that was very uh, basic uh, blob tracking, a very basic setup. And uh, of course, as, as usual, uh, there is some nice example in the uh, snippets uh, with a bit more of a here. 
and quite an uh, interesting one with the jelly beans. And another, um, another useful one is the blob tracking shop. Okay. And the blob tracking shop is a bit more complicated to use, in my opinion, than the blob tracking shop that really works well um, for you know simple setup where your uh, top image is um, is uh, quite clean. Um, but the really the advantage of the blob tracking shop is that you can feed in uh, shop channels, and it's really made to be used with uh, 2D scanners. So, for example, to be used with um, Hokuyo Shop here, or mm -hmm. the um, other one um, would be the Rotfo, which I can't see in the list just here. Those oh. Rotfo. Okay. And some uh, laser also um, sometimes they send data as Twio. Um, so you could just have your X, Y position of, you know, everything that is being scanned in an area um, and those X, Y position from that convert them to shop. Um, and lastly, fit that in the blob track shop here, which will really um, just tell you where are your blobs and everything. Okay. Uh, this example here, uh, I, I find it's one of the best snippets in the world of snippet mm. library maybe it's maybe greg so can cute. tell us uh who designed that but um it's, it's really you know interesting or you can <laughs> see um where is the laser and what is shooting at okay um so here's that noisy data would be um uh the wall if i'm if i'm correct and you have two blobs basically you know in, a, in the field of view of the laser where all the laser are, are shooting and it's also showcasing that uh, other interesting feature of the um, blob track shop which is a uh, lost blob timeout so it's very convenient because if you have uh, those two blobs here you can see um with lasers with 2d lasers you can't have two people um basically in the field of view, in direct view, you know, in the, in the line from the laser thing. Um, so you have some instances, some cases where um, people are lost, one of them just disappear, okay? And mm. the lost blob timeout data can prevent that, where uh, just, as you see, uh, continue on trend where it's going, and then um, if it disappears, it will continue on the trend where it's going, and uh, when it shows back up, you, see, you can really tell here. It, I'm not sure if it's the best expression here, but was it? Uh, did it make sense? Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Uh, anything about that, uh, Marcus? Blob track shop. Okay, yeah. Um, so there is no snippet for that, I think. Uh, would that be something in the palette using it? I'm not sure. Um, so, how would we use it? Yeah, just. I, I think the, the, the background. Uh, Let's, let's, whoops, we want this here. So we still have the blobs going. Um, okay. So what you mean you would do is this here and over perfect okay and 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I learned something today. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great. It's really, uh, it's knowing, now. it's learning from what is uh, the background to do some background removal in the background. That's great. Cool. Anything? Okay. So should we move to uh, Kinect land and then uh, during Kinect land, we will also go back to block tracking. Okay. Cool, cool, so cool. Here in sensors, I will uh, just do um, a base comp here, which I will call Kinect in case, you know, you want some other sensors. And uh, here I will add a Kinect top and um, I don't have the Kinect going on right now, but I did a recording uh, earlier um, today. And uh, I'm playing back the, re the recording um, uh, from Kinect Studio, okay? And that's a Kinect uh, V2 uh, being used right now. Mm -hmm. um, so welcome uh, in my living room. <laughs> <As a point. laughs> and um, so, here in a touch designer just doing that without having a kinect running actually uh, you can just drop a kinect uh, top and you see you can you have uh, the the recording playing back in in touch designer okay so uh, i find that's really convenient when uh, doing some prototyping uh, because you know if someone else you're working on a project in a group and only one person has a Kinect or, you know, something is going on and you you don't happen to have a Kinect, you can just use that recording, right? Uh, so here we'll switch to depths. Uh, I want actually mm. the portal point cloud. And um, here we'll switch to have um, unknown point values as uh, infinite. And um, we'll also open the palette um, because we're going to use a few things from the palette. And one of them is the new point clouds uh, comp. I don't know if you played with those already. Uh, no. So the point clouds comp here, uh, they, really, um, they really work well with the new point clouds format uh, that we can uh, import uh, uh, really uh, uh, built in, in into touch designer now and it's also working um, out of the box with uh, Kinect data because we already have all of point cloud data here from the Kinect sensor. So we could uh, for example just um, you know oh. uh, plug the Kinect data right away in our print transform um, comp here and um, you can already do some operations on all the point cloud, uh, like mm -hmm. rotate, uh, you know, if you want to rotate here mm -hmm. on X um, or um, rotate, let's say a 180 on Y, for example. And uh, the view you are seeing right now, um, it's uh, another feature that was brought uh, in the last year, I think, if I remember, which is a uh, view as points on uh, the tops. Okay. Mm. So on any tops oh. with, um, I think 16 or 32 bits float values, um, it should work pretty well uh, to really uh, convert your data and see what are, uh, you know, each uh, pixel value actually uh, working like in a, in a 3D world. Uh, so you can do that right away and without adaptive homing here to avoid that uh, shaking. And another one is also when you are in view as image, uh, normalize split, which doesn't work quite well in that case because of the infinite values, I forgot. So never mind that, we'll look at it later. So point transforms and okay, I have here my little setup and we'll continue also with another um, 
container here, which we'll call filter here. And actually we want the filter first because we're gonna filter out some uh, data we don't want to use, okay? And then we will transform whatever of that data we have left. Okay. So um, what we're gonna do in filter, are you still following so far? All good? Oh, did we lose crystal actually? Okay, yeah. We didn't lose the chat. Is the chat still here? <laughs> Perfect. So um, what we'll want to filter um, is the ceiling. Um, the floor and the data here on that uh, left side and the data a bit on, on that right side. So we'll go in here, my filter pump, and what we will do, we're going to use some thresholds. And we know that the Y um, position um, in here is in the green channel, right? So we will select uh, on the threshold top uh, to fill to just have the um, comparison, uh, the threshold comparison going on on the green channel here, and. To just save on performances, we're gonna switch to 32 bits float mono. Nearest pixels here, just to make sure we don't have any uh, smoothing of our data going on. And here, we'll just... Um, Oh, did I set up that? Uh, we want, yeah, exactly like that. So we want to just, exactly. We want to cut off the ceiling, no, no more ceiling. And um, so here we have it working already and we'll just do the same, um, but uh, with uh, less for um, here as the floor just like that here. Great. Yes. Yeah, uh, because if um, here the values are not set to infinite uh what's going on um is that uh we i i wouldn't really know how to explain it um we have um yeah but basically all or all, all our noise all our noise is uh set uh, all the unknown values from the sensor of the kinect are uh, moved back to zero right so we can't actually say um remove the data that is um, that is the floor and underneath uh, because um, they are they are just always at zero right so here uh, we have the ceiling and the floor uh, removed and we're gonna um, remove also uh, all the, the walls we see here on the left. And those are on the x-axis, so it would mean they're on the red channel. And we basically want to, 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 to where am I going? 
remove that part here and uh, here we will remove this part about that okay and finally we'll go on the, um, the axis the blood channel and we will remove Am I not on the blue channel? Yes, greater. Okay, so we can see here we are like taking off all the, the background basically. Okay, great. So now what are we going to do with that data? We want um, to use the point cloud data of uh, the Kinect um, sensor and just um, multiply it with all those, um, those masks that we created. And we have one uh, top for that where we can do it all at once, which is the composite um, top. And we want to make sure it's all 32 bits data. And now we have a much cleaner um, point cloud where it's really filtering out um, part part of the point cloud that I'm, I was not really interested in was what I really want is just to to track the person walking around right uh, are you good so far crystal any question oh we can't hear you <laughs> You're muted. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm good. <laughs> okay, amazing. Um. <laughs> we no, it's not. <laughs> so uh, one really important point here is that it kind of gets quite heavy uh, to have all this going on, uh, the mm -hmm. threshold operations. So um, uh, it's it's really, you know, uh, still in the optimization um, world. Uh, it's it's mm -hmm. uh, really good, you know, to just uh, uh, set those as a mono um, and then put it back after the operation, you put it back as 32 bits float RGBA. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a filter here and you know I just want to see it also in my parent viewer and look how much cleaner all the data is in uh, in my transform uh, point transform comp here you know we don't have the ceiling anymore we don't have the walls it's really just one yeah. person walking around um so there's still uh, that uh, little library here uh, around, but we will remove that later. So the next step is another new component from the palette, um, which is the camera viewport, just here. Okay. So did you? Try to use it yet or never? I um, think it, I have not it used it before. No. Okay. So, so the camera viewport will just um, act as a camera comp, and is gonna be mm -hmm. a bit more of an um, advanced camera comp with uh, a bunch of extra features, especially uh, made to be convenient to move around in your scene. Okay. Um, so to have it working in a very simple setup, uh, what you want is to have a render and they're gonna communicate back and forth between each other, okay? But first we want to have something to render, right? So mm -hmm. let's just get that point cloud here mm -hmm. and we'll uh, switch it to yeah, just color, we're good with that. And we will um, use rectangles SOP here, which I will make a bit smaller. Uh, 
Interesting. Is it too small? I can't see them. Okay. And um, here a geometry. Okay. So we have a geo, mm -hmm. we have a render, we have a camera, and I don't want to use any lighting because I want this uh, to be um, the most lightweight possible. Okay. So we'll just use a constant mat here. And we'll just render this uh, point cloud of the Kinect, okay? Uh, as mm -hmm. um, instances of uh, billboards, so th those little rectangles, you know, it's just um, just instances with only four points. Mm. So here, I, oops. I will just um, assign that as my uh, translate up and just select R, G, and B. And my rectangle are a bit too big actually here. But yes, camera is missing. Okay, so now we want to see um, our instances. We want to see it in the render top, right? I will just assign my camera and i'm dropping frames like crazy right now but we will fix that i think it's just because the instances are a bit too big and overlapping yes amazing so i'm rendering the the wall uh, kinect view right right now and um there is still uh, nothing going on in the camera so what we want to do is um, tell to the camera who is the render, okay? So it's really going both way, where you set that camera viewport comp on your render as a camera, and you set your render, you reference it on the render top parameter of uh, this new camera viewport comp, okay? And what it will allow you to do and look at that, I'll put the render as a background. You see, it really allows you to uh, render and also play around with your camera um, like this, right? And there's a few cool features coming. Like if you do right click, you can have a top view right away. And that's exactly what I want. I want to have a top view of uh, my Kinect world. Okay. Are you still following? All good? Yes. Yeah. Any questions in the chat? Yes, um, so you could use the point render. Uh, we just have to update it with the latest uh, camera viewport version uh, because right now it's using an older version. And uh, in my case, I don't want to use the line mat, which the point render is using mm. to have, you know, those really nice, uh, nice looking, um, that really nice looking point cloud of the banana. Mm. Um, in my case, I really just want to use um, those billboards because they are a lower cost. Okay. Does it answer your, mm. your question, uh, Marcus? So, now that I have the camera viewport set and I'm in a top view, uh, one uh, really great thing is that, you know, I can just uh, zoom in a bit more on my image and wherever, you know, I want to be on that point cloud, um, I could have, you know, a bit of a, a top view, like drone like, mm. where I could follow something specific, you know, and uh, mm. it's just all, you know, really set up uh, to have that top view of my point cloud mm -hmm. and of the person walking. And why do I do that? It's down the floor here. I'm going to do a blob tracking of, uh, this, uh, of this point cloud render of the Kinect, okay? And I do it this way 
because if you have your Kinect uh, set um, at a certain angle, you know, in front of mm -hmm. a crowd uh, in your installation, um, it allows you to actually uh, really change the whole point of view um, and and the whole uh, coordinate system, all the axes, you can flip them very easily to have something more convenient to work with, um, you know, down the floor in your setup. And also to have that blob tracking where you could imagine um, being used for people walking on a canvas, you know, where you have like floor projection, for example. So here, what I will do, I'm going to blur out. Um, mm. Well, first I will uh, downscale the mm -hmm. resolution of my render mm. to, let's say, uh, that's not what I wanted. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Why am I not keeping the ratio here? What are you doing, Michelle? Nineteen <laughs> twenty. <laughs> okay. Anyways, um, yeah, let's go like that. Uh, and I'll just uh, do to do, do here. As I'm just going to do it very use simple. It. You can always use a transform top to down size after. <laughs> That's a joke, right? <laughs> not 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 a hundred percent, but. <laughs> um. So here, um, I don't uh, I don't scale everything, and no, I want to uh, just blur out a few things because I want to get rid of that, uh, you know, a bit of the noise um, that is left in uh, in my Kinect uh, data. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna erode a bit of the image for all those like uh, uh, pixels that are like um, a bit uh, going rogue here. <laughs> and I mm -hmm. think if I will just do a threshold right after, yeah, this is already mm. taken care of. Okay. Thanks. So now there is, um, we can still see the, the library here, right, in the image. Mm. And I'm just going to first unzoom here a bit mm. and just try to have um you know a bit more da data we could you know also flip everything on to have everything on the length uh, of the image um but yeah i think it's pretty good like that so what we'll do we'll just um erase here um we'll just mask uh, that library and uh, what do I want to do? Just on this rectangle here. Because basically why I'm doing that is that imagine your um, you have people walking around and there is that uh, one object that is in the middle of your installation of your you know of your interactive space that object um, mm. cannot be moved for some reasons mm. and you will have it you know in, in in the point cloud so that's you know that last little bit I'm going to remove it uh, manually here um, and what I want to do, I want to actually have an uh, outside operation, I think. Mm. Yep, exactly. And lastly, I will do my blob tracking. And let's just have the original data here to see a bit what's going on. And 
here. One. Okay. Mm. So let's see if uh, when I'm walking around. Yeah, you see. Okay, it's it's mm. working. So we have, um, you know, that top view lob tracking happening, even though your Kinect was not at all set up to track people that way, right? Mm -mm. Like your Kinect point of view might be, you know, straight facing right. just you know, uh, in a mm. front view of the of the room of your interactive space. And mm -hmm. um, so now we, we just change that to have a bit of a uh, top view, which can be okay. uh, quite interesting and useful if you do some, mm. um, if you project interactive content on the floor, for example, and you don't mm -hmm. have the budget uh, to set up the wall, um, you know, uh, 3D scanners with like uh, mm -hmm. really uh, um, high resolution point clouds. Um, mm. So now we have our blob tracking and you can just uh, use this data as, um, you know, top data or uh, mm. the that here we can uh, also convert it to uh, shop data where our first row already be names and our first column is already values and we want uh, a channel per column here And here we'll have another out. All right. So we have a little mm. uh, sensor blob tracking box uh, designed. Mm. And since we're in sensors, I will just quickly add uh, two other mm. outs here. And here we are back um, in your project and in uh, the work also that uh, Marcus did earlier. Um, mm. And we could just uh, use here um, our blob tracking mm. data um, in the painting here, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're just gonna uh, hijack uh, whatever <laughs> Marcus was doing mm -hmm. here, okay? Mm. Um, are you okay with that, Marcus? Can I? Go for it. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> All right. Fine. <laughs> if you have to. <clears throat> so you were um, assigning yet yeah, your inside uh, you and inside V here. And here we are doing the slope on value. And I will just say U V. Okay, and I'm going to reassign you and uh, the here. Mm. Value, LV, and whatever is assigned here on the force. Okay, yeah, that's good. Perfect. And um, I'm seeing I'm dropping frames right now, probably because I'm streaming, there is Parsec on and I'm doing a, a ton of things. So let's see if just hiding the viewers. Yeah, I'm back to 60 frames per second. And we'll just try and see what's going on with uh, this guy here. So maybe we will see it happening. Uh, sorry, if you want for more effect, you can also increase the force a little bit on the, um, on the, uh, yeah, this one, um, or force X, Y scale down the bottom. That might, yeah, then you will see it more mm. pronounced, I think. Yep. Oh, mm. Yeah, we we'll see it happening mm. here. Okay. So nice. you see, it's, it's not using really um, all the, the Kinect data, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I imagine that project because I was not sure um, on who you would set up your your Kinect mm -hmm. and where would be uh, where, where would be the um, the projection you know in mm -hmm. uh, in that space you 
you showed earlier. Um, mm -hmm. So I was wondering, oh, maybe there will be some uh, projection on the floor and you would mm -hmm. have, you know, just people walking around. Um, mm -hmm. And you mentioned having Kinex. Uh, mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, oh, could we do it easily with Kinex? So you have it here. <laughs> cool. Any questions? Um, no, it's, it's, it's very helpful. Um, it's also kind of just a little bit hypnotized watching it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Any questions from the chat that I'm, uh, I missed or are we all good? Nope, just a lot of praise. A lot of impressed chatters. Oh yeah? <laughs> well, yes. thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right. Next. I guess we should save that file and send it to Crystal mm -hmm. oh, before yes. we forget. Please save. Yes. <laughs> so I will save it with the Kinex sensor uh, data here. Mm -hmm. um, I will. I will just lock this one in the file. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let me lock at some point when there is actually someone in the frame. Or maybe lock uh, the connect. Outside, easier to find. Um, I was gonna actually deactivate the Kinect ah. here. Mm. Yes. Mm. Um, just in case, you know, you want to set things up uh, with, you know, whatever sensor you mm. want to use. Um, all right, we're good. It's saved. <clears throat> and uh, I guess I'll stop sharing my screen right now. Sure, yeah. <laughs> We can go back to this screen here. Hello. <laughs> uh, because once again, we've used up pretty much all of the time. I know. We have three minutes to say goodbye. That was very useful and helpful. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, guys. Good. Yeah, no problem. Really nice to see it. Um, the different, um, well, how many different techniques can be applied to any mm -hmm. one project? This is. Uh, Pretty nice. Impressive. Yeah. Um, feedback. Yeah. Feedback. Noise. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Feedback if you have questions about out. feedback, um, just just give a call to Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess unfortunately, none of us are going to be able to see. But you're going to document your project, right? Yeah. So so we will be able to see uh, see yes. the outcome. Yeah, when is it running happy. again? It's running July 10th to August 10th, and they're even getting the local, it's a small town, so they're getting the local TV station oh. to, to oh, nice. run it. <laughs> other, other maybe, news. <laughs> well, so maybe you could put in the chat, um, uh, you know, link to the, exit, to the, um, you know, to the show, just in case we have yeah, uh, yeah. community. Yeah, in. it's. It's uh, an hour and a half from Barcelona, so you can take a bus from Barcelona over. Um, but um, I can put in the link to the residency as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Parkhead Studio. Um, yeah. I, I cannot and, hi yeah. recommend it, highly. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. But I mean, apply. people can also find you on Instagram and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. the website. They could. They can. They can they can find out more. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty nice, so I'll respond to people if they message me. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy Friday, everybody! Thank you. Uh, thank thanks, you. everyone. Thank you, Crystal, it's for. Uh, it's gonna take my Saturday in a minute. <laughs> What's right, that? Yeah. It's gonna be your Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Time for a swim. Yeah. It's, it's even Saturday morning in some, uh, like, like, like already 8 a.m. Yeah. in some parts of the world, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, well um, so we'll say goodbye to the streaming crowd outside there. Um, we thank can stay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Chad. <laughs> Have a good weekend, everyone. And, thank and you, also, bots. and yeah. also, um, please send us your, uh, if you would like to be on in session, go to derivative.ca slash in session and uh, send us, send us, send us your stuff. 
very good idea really yes and yeah if you don't send your stuff i will come and find you <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> with that's all your, your blob tracking <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> we'll blob we'll track you to the end of the everybody. world yeah <laughs> all right um all right. so Adios. we'll see everybody soon in and uh, crystal please stay on because uh, we can yep. keep chatting for a short bit after we say awesome. goodbye to the rest. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks for Bye, coming. Everyone else. See everybody. Have a good Bye -bye. Bye. Bye.